think at least nine wars around the world, none of which are legal, none of which were really uh, voted on or authorized by Congress, which is what our Constitution requires. So what are we going to do about it? That's the question. And what we're doing about it is very exciting because it's practical, it's strategic, and it's something we can actually win at. Um, I gave each of you a pledge form, it's pink. If you hand that in to us before you leave today, we'll have a raffle for one of these beautiful new tote bags that says, imagine a world without weapons, divest from war. Now what does that mean to divest? Do any of you, are any of you aware of any divestment campaigns that have succeeded in the world today? Yes? No. Just name it. Uh, <coughs> yeah, yeah. I was going to say South Africa. Apartheid? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's one. Um, that, that was a winner. And why does divestment succeed? I'll just give you the answer to that. Because if you choke off the funding for what they're doing, then they can't do it. They can't do it without the money. And isn't that what war is about? Isn't it making a lot of profit for certain people? And aren't those people the weapons manufacturers? And the five large weapons manufacturers that get 25% of our federal budget? And you can say it with me, and I'm going to name them, and you can say it with me. Lockheed, Lockheed. Boeing, Boeing. Boeing, General Dynamics, General Dynamics. Raytheon, Raytheon, and Grumman. Grumman. Those five weapons companies actually earn 25% of our federal tax dollars go to them. And those billionaire CEOs are doing a fantastic job for their shareholders, aren't they? Because you can't invest in anything more profitable than weapons. War never ends. Right. It just keeps going and it keeps increasing and it keeps expanding, right? So what's our approach? It's to stop funding it. And how are we going to do that? As individuals, look at how you spend your, your money. Who here spends money? <laughs> okay. And every choice you make, every, every penny you spend, Every choice you make of where to bank, where to shop, think about, does that money go to Wall Street or does it stay in my community? Mm -hmm. If you bank at Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Chase, Citibank, you're sending your money to Wall Street and they fund those five weapons manufacturers wow. because that's how they make money. Mm -hmm. So think about this for a minute. What if you moved your money, and it's not hard to do, to a local bank or credit union? Mm-hmm. What if when you shop, instead of going to a big corporate franchise, you spend your money locally and create the peace economy that's going to move us away from war? Mm -hmm. Let's stop funding it. It's as mm -hmm. simple as that. Mm -hmm. And I personally, because we're holding investment workshops for, to help people move their money, I have a 401k. Anyone else here have a 401k or a pension, something like that? Okay, so a group we're working with at Code Pink is called As You Sow. They took a look at my portfolio. Guess what? I'm invested in nuclear weapons. I am invested in nuclear weapons. Whoa. What am I going to do about it? I'm going to move my money to some funds that are clean. They don't invest in fossil fuels. They don't invest in private prisons. They don't invest in weapons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to feel pretty darn good when I do that. But I need help to do it. Sure. So we're having ongoing monthly workshops to help you do that. The next one's on September 22 mm -hmm. in Berkeley. And if you fill in this pledge form I gave you and give us our, your email. I'll send you the details of that. It's a free workshop and it's in combination with Fossil Free California and Indivisible Berkeley Economic Justice Team who has done the research on what local banks and credit unions are clean and where you can move your money. And I will be talking again about divesting your portfolio, your, your pension fund, your 401k, whatever it happens to be. It's not hard, it's just a little bit time consuming, it might take you a month or two. Mm -hmm. And you need support. It's kind of like AA. Um, I need to know right. where my five minutes is up because Eleanor is coming up next. <coughs> where are we at? You have 20 seconds. Thank you. So, <laughs> so, another thing was, I just want you to know we're in a huge coalition here. If your group isn't part of our coalition of 50 or 80 peace and justice groups, please join us. It's very easy to do. You just go to the Code Pink website. Make a couple of clicks and you're with us. And I'm going to have the list of coalition partners in the back. NLAB, NAACP, ACLU, Veterans for Peace, 
It goes on and on. There's like 80 groups with us. This is a very effective, very widespread, and very well thought out campaign. And I, I encourage you, I absolutely invite you and encourage you and welcome you to join with Code Pink and Andy Moore. Thank you. <laughs> oh, you have five minutes each? Oh, yeah. Okay, I see. Good. Ten minutes. Uh, the DAPA duo. Um, so I am Eleanor. I work with Code Pink. Um, most of the work that I've done with Code Pink has to do with um, anti-militarism. I work. I do a lot of work in um, combating drone assassination program that the United States has. Mm -hmm. We go out to Creech Air Force Base twice a year. <coughs> it is drone central in the United States. It's the place from which all the drones are controlled. that are flown everywhere around the world. Um, and it's where the training takes place. And the second thing that I've done is that I've worked for five or six years with the Stop Urban Shield Coalition. And some of you probably know we just won a major victory which is that um, the Alameda County Sheriff's Department from now on when it puts on the Urban Shield conferences has to leave out the militaristic aspects of the training. No more SWAT team exercises, no more weapons show. And it's a major victory, we work very hard for it. The um, important thing for me is that the issue of militarism at home and abroad are the same issue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are not separate, mm -hmm. and we need to begin talking, we need always to talk about them as being the same. Mm -hmm. And what I want to do today is continue what Cynthia was talking about in terms of divestment, and just give you some very concrete steps so that you can begin looking at your own money and deciding where your money is now and how to move it. How many people are here from Rossmore? See, if you want, we can come out to Rossmore if you can organize it, and we can begin a workshop or two helping people figure out how to divest their money from war. Mm -hmm. If we divest our money from war, we'll starve war, and when you starve war, it dies. Mm -hmm. um, and our, our view is that we work in coalition with a lot of groups um, on a lot of different things, so divestment is not the only thing we do, but it's an important thing. So take a look at the handout, and let me just begin to walk you through the handout, because divestment seems very scary. For I know, I can see by looking at the audience that most of you are older. As we get older, we become more conservative with our money, we become more concerned. We want to make sure that we are able to take care of ourselves, that we are not burdening other people, and so on. And so we're very careful about our money, how we spend it, and taking care of it. Um, and this handout gives you some non-scary ways to look at where your money is and how to move it. First thing I want to say is that um, return on investment, if it's um, not war related, not military related, not fossil fuel related, is actually better than the return on investments in on weapons and in fossil fuels. There's a lot of data to show that you actually make more money if you invest in peaceful and green um, things. The um, second thing is that if you get involved with looking at your own money, divesting from war and investing in peace, you can do this from home. You can do it with friends. It's a very green, uh, it's a very green endeavor. You don't need to drive someplace. If your energy is low, you can sit at your desk, sit in your bed, get your little computer out, um, mm -hmm. and you can do all this work. You don't need to travel around to do it. So it's a very green endeavor. It's also a very social endeavor because I recommend that you work with your neighbors and you work with your friends, looking at where you have your money and how to move it. The first thing that makes sense is for you to look at your bank account and your checking account. That's the easiest place to start. Do you bank with Chase? Do you bank with Bank of America? Do you bank with Wells Fargo? Do you bank with the big boys? If you do, you can change that, and it's not very hard to do that. If you look at number four on the handout, um, you can see that there are some websites and organizations that provide information for alternative banking. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we don't have an overhead, so I can't do that. But if you want to send me your email, mm -hmm. I will give you the live links so that you don't have to sit there typing it into your computer. But there are banks and there are credit unions, particularly credit unions, because they're not for profit. So they don't need to turn over and make a lot of money. They serve communities. And that's where you should be looking. Um, you can take a look at your pensions and you can take a look at your 401ks or whatever it is you have in terms of retirement savings, whether you're a young person or an older person. And you can move your money to funds that are not war related. If you look at number B, 4B, you will see some um, <coughs> suggestions for where to look so that you can find out what your funds are invested in. I did that the other day. I'm just starting this process. It's not like I've done this. I'm with a lot of you. It's um, something that's scary to me. It's new. Um, but you can find out, and I found out that many of the funds that my retirement money is invested in are really dirty. Mm -hmm. And that was horrifying. Um, mm -hmm. And if you look at As You Sow, for example, uh, it's a very easy website to navigate. It just takes a little patience. You'll find out where your money is um, going, who's benefiting from your money. Um, the other thing is that you need to be kind to yourself. It's not going to happen overnight. Uh, but if you work at it, you will figure out how to move your money. We cannot recommend particular financial advisors, but a financial advisor might not be a bad idea because there are tax consequences to moving your money, and you want to be careful about um, you want to be careful about that. Um, and there are some recommendations here for how to get that information. Um, if you move your money, make sure you educate your bank as you're moving your money from your credit from your checking account, your um, bank account. Make sure you make a very public statement that I'm moving it because you're investing in war. We need to do that kind of education. And you can do it with your neighbors. You can educate your neighbors. You can organize groups. Um, and then let me bring this to an end. Um, for those of you who are interested, number nine tells you something about how to find out how much war money and how much fossil fuel money your senators and your representatives are getting. Um, there are some glitches in that website, but it's still pretty good. I spent a lot of time and I found out what our local representatives and our senators, um, who, what, where they're getting their money, and then you can begin to pressure them. Um, <laughs> lastly, let me say that there are some very similar, there are similarities between the divestment program for fossil fuels and for um, war. And if anybody wants to stick around later, I'd really be interested in finding out how people see the differences and the similarities between the two, because the fossil fuel divestment program is progressing very well. Yep. New York City is now divesting from fossil fuels. Mm -hmm. And there are other municipalities doing the same thing in various pension funds. And so we need to step up and do the same thing with war money. Anyway, read this. Um, I think it gives you some places to start. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you want more information, we're on the page. Thank you. Thank you. statewide, also local. Uh, the Friends of the Public Bank of Oakland, uh, the head of that group is with Cold Team, Susan Harmon. Uh, we are also participating in San Francisco discussions for a public bank, and there's a statewide uh, 
alliance forming for public banking statewide. So it's, it's happening, it's very much alive, and we're very much behind it, because when we have a public bank, that money will not go to fund war, it'll go to human needs. Thank you, Daniel. Mm -hmm. Let me just add that the uh, Friends of Oakland Public Bank have pushed very hard to get this feasibility study approved by the City Council of Oakland, and that meeting is going to be later this month. So if any of you are connected with <laughs> Oakland in any way or Alameda County, we want you there at the meeting. <laughs> Really to scream and yell, except for the public feasibility study. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we did Vietnam War, you know, way back then, the 70s. I was a group, I wasn't part of it, but I was in the Peace and Justice Center, and there were some people who said, I'm taking out. War takes 30 or 40 percent, I think, at the time my tax money. I'm going to put it in a saving account. And I'm going to tell the Treasury that's where the war money is. I'm not paying. Come after me. <laughs> they did go after some people. But not that much. Are but you it suggesting catch, it didn't catch on. Are you suggesting that as an alternative to the investment campaign? It, what they did is they set the money in other words, in a saving account, and say, no, this is my tax money. Okay, what is your question? The question is, <laughs> there are more radical steps. You're right, the money is a thing. But how about if we set up a national thing where you had a million people say, I think that you should organize that. <laughs> Thank you very much. We're divesting. Right, right. Thank you very much. And there is a war resistors that. league that has such a program. It's a very vibrant yeah. program. Do you know much about uh, how much the California retirement system is involved with uh, the war of money? A lot. Yeah, and as I understand it, there's some legislation going through the California legislature right now that would en enable CalPERS to at least look at their fossil fuel investments, but I don't know about the weapons. What do you think? It's starting. So yeah. would the strategy be for well, those of us that are at stake, are we trying to rewrite the uh, board and explain that kind of stuff? Yes. What I'd really love is if you hand in a pledge form and we get your email, we'll update you as we progress yeah. through this campaign, and that's one of the things I'd like to get more answers about. And I just want to make a comment about this. Jim talked about uh, open and public and all the banking. Uh, Ellen Brown, who started all this, is a friend of the Earth Federation. And, uh, we're adopting her idea at the international level. We think that we ought to have public zone banking at the international level. So it's a very powerful idea which is catching on. Yeah, if we have if we have the state owned government own our banks, they're basically they'll be our banks instead of Wall Street banks. Wall Street is a huge funder of weapons and war. Another question? Right. Make another comment. Uh, one second. There was somebody behind you. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say that um, one thing that I also realized is that I think as men, we need to learn how to step back a little bit and hear, hear women's voices because um, I think we tend to dismiss things, but obviously women see things totally different than men, and I think usually that's a very positive thing, and um, I like to also say that I think your idea is very great, and I, I like how you guys take the color pink and you make it something strong, mm -hmm. and you make it stand for something beyond just basically, you know, pretty or whatever, and you're making it something that's women empowerment, and I like to thank you for that. Wow. <laughs> I tried to convince the employees of my wife's company to get their money out of the big five banks, and I'm not succeeding. But now I'm going to tell you, I have been hearing that they have passed regulations nationwide to make it impossible for the small banks to make a profit. Hmm. The small banks are going out of business all over the country. Yeah, so right. you better hurry and get your money out of the big banks. Mm -hmm. What about credit unions? 
Credit unions different, are wonderful because credit unions are not for profit institutions. Yeah. And by and large, they invest in the local communities. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, I have not yet moved all of my money um, out of the dirty banks, I have to say that, which is why this presentation and this work is important to me because it's helping me do that. Um, um, and credit unions are the place I'm looking. I'm already a member of one credit union and I'm going to you know, continue that process. Um, I just want to say before we end that I urge you to work with your friends and your neighbors to do this together because for a lot of us, dealing with your money is a scary thing. You know, we want to make sure we have enough just to get to the end. Um, and um, if you do it with other people, it really is liberating. So, and we will come out to Rossmore, and we will come any place where you can gather people to sponsor a workshop. Thank you. I'm just going to pick one of the pledge forms, and that person gets this lovely bag that I showed you earlier. Mm -hmm. But just before I do that, um, there are two more things I want to mention. BlackRock is the largest investment fund in the world, and they are a special, uh, uh, we're engaged with them, trying to get them to divest from weapons. So you'll see some stuff, if you go on the Code Pink website and you just click that you want to get updates from Code Pink, it's codepink.org. Um, it's on the handout. Yeah, it's on the handout, and you'll get Updates on our BlackRock campaign. They've nominated the, the International Rescue Community. Uh, one of the international humane groups has nominated the CEO of this company for a humanitarian award. And we have a little problem with that because <laughs> they are funding weapons and war. So we're saying, please don't give that award to him. <coughs> the other thing I want to mention is our representative, Barbara Lee, initiated a campaign to ask Congress members to not take weapons money. And uh, Eleanor said something about that. We have about 12 or 15 Congress members so far who pledge not to take any money from weapons manufacturers or the NRA. And we're working hard on that. We've tried to meet with Kamala Harris, our senator. Mm. So mm. if you have a member of Congress and you'd like to ask them not to take weapons money, please see us afterwards. Is the Sanye one of those 12? Not yet. Okay. Mm. Not yet. And you can go to opensecrets.org. It's on the handout to find out where people are getting their money, where your elected politicians get their money.